Well, welcome back to this series we're calling How to Protect Your Family. I want to encourage you to take a Bible and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. If you don't have a Bible, uh, we want to give you one. Listen, we gave a Bible to every man at the men's retreat because real men read the Bible, real men study the Bible, real men live out the Bible. And we want you to have a copy of God's Word for yourself. My team and I will be out in the lobby. Let us give you a copy of God's Word uh, for yourself. But also take out your message notes. And I want to encourage you to take notes today. Uh, This is very important because I believe this is going to be a life-changing message for many of you, but everybody can take notes because if you've already heard what I'm going to share today, you can actually share this life-changing message with somebody else, and you'll see why that's so important. So please take notes today. You can download those online. I know we've got them at the Corpus Home Church as well, Uh, but I want you to take some notes, and this is a life-changing moment for many in this message. Let's start with Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, in your notes, in the Bible, here on the screen, look at the first phrase, it says in verse 13, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor. So that's why we're walking through this series. We've got a lot of pieces of this. So there's this invisible armor that helps us with this invisible war and fight that we're all in. Now look at verse 14. It says, stand your ground. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Put on the belt of truth. We talked about that last week. And this week we've got this. It says, and, and help me out, Corpus Home Church Online, right here in the room, six words. What are they? The body armor of God's righteousness. Wow. We get body armor of God's righteousness. Now that word righteousness really intimidates a lot of people. It's a big word. It's a long word. None of us can spell it. Uh, But it's like righteousness. What does that even mean? Uh, I I looked up in my theological dictionary I have in my office, one of the dictionaries when I flipped to the word righteousness, the definition of righteousness is three pages. If I read the definition of righteousness from my theological dictionary, we would close in prayer afterwards, okay? It would take me 30 minutes to read just the definition. So I'm going to take a three-page definition and put it into two sentences, You're welcome, all right? And I want you to write them down. Here they are. First of all, what is righteousness? Well, first of all, righteousness means being right with God. This is something deep down everybody wants to know. Everybody tries to achieve. I want to be right with God. Now, some people may not admit that, or they may not say it that way. Uh, The way a lot of people say it, at least to me, is, I want to know that I'm going to heaven when I die. You see, deep down, we just know I want to be right with God because he made this place called heaven, so I probably should talk to him about it so I can go there. Now, there was a a lady years ago who would always come to real life, and she was very, very faithful to the church, but her husband didn't come very often. Matter of fact, I saw him on Christmas, saw him on Easter, I knew what he looked like, but he would always avoid me. Well, one day... Years and years later, she called me up, and her husband was uh, on his deathbed, and it was very obvious that he was not going to get out of that bed, and she called me and said, Pastor, can you come by and pray with my husband? And I was like, of course I can. Now, when I walked in, he was still alert enough to speak to me, and this is exactly what this man said. He said, now I'm ready to talk to you. And if it wasn't so serious, that actually is funny, right? It's like, okay, now, you know what I mean? Like, now you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Why? Because when you stare at your own immortality, all of a sudden, I'm about to step into the unknown, and I'd like to know that God is on the other side of that unknown. I want to know, am I right with God? And I want to encourage you not to wait until that moment, but not to miss just the beauty and the blessing of righteousness, but it's being right with God. Now, when you think about this afterlife, you, you think about, man, I'm, I need the body armor of God's righteousness, and what it's going to protect me from is fear about death. It's going to protect me from worry about the unknown tomorrow, because watch this, the worst thing that can happen to me is I die and get to spend eternity in heaven with God. I'm 100% certain I'm going to heaven, and when I have that body armor of his righteousness, I'm unstoppable in this world. 
So it means to be made right with God. We'll talk more about that. But this is how I know with 100% certainty I'm right with God. I want to share it with you. It's in your notes or on the screen. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says, this is good news. It says, this good news. Now I want you to circle good news. That word is where we get the word gospel from. And so people try to sound, you know, very pompous, like, hey, I want to share the gospel with you. What does that mean? Good news. That's what the word gospel actually means. It's good news. A lot of times you hear, well, uh, let's turn to the gospel of Matthew. What does that mean? Matthew has some good news. He wants you to know it. The gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all have good news. This is good news. This is the gospel, okay? The gospel tells us that God makes us ready for heaven. Now, very important words next, six words, real life. Say it with me. What are the next six words? Makes us right in God's sight. Circle that. That's righteousness. I want to be right in God's sight. How do I do that? The gospel was good news. It, the, the, how do we get right with God? Watch this. When you get right with God, when we put our faith and trust in Christ to save us. Did you notice this is a God thing? This is not a you thing. You don't make your own armor. People try. That's why they're all scared. Well, I tried to get this body armor, man. I kind of made it out of what I got, you know. I did a few good things in elementary school, and I was a Boy Scout, and I tried to, it's like, I tried to put it all together, you know. Helped an old lady across the street twice. It's like, man, you can't make your own armor. This is God's armor. It's a gift to you. It's his righteousness. It's not your righteousness. It's a gift to you, and it makes you right with God when you put your faith and trust in Christ to save us. So righteousness means being right with God. We'll come back to that. Here's the second thing it means. Righteousness also means doing the right things. So it means being right with God and doing the right things for God. So, so if you say you're a Christian today, you say, I follow Jesus. Listen, friend, if you follow Jesus, your life should prove it. What this is saying is, is I know Jesus. Really? If you were accused of being a Christian, would it hold up in a court of law? Do we have evidence to prove the righteousness of God in your life? In other words, if you say, well, I follow Jesus, that should be obvious by how you treat people, by how you handle money, by how you handle business decisions, by your character, by your integrity, by your generosity, by the fact that, yeah, I help people, I serve people, I bless people. And so I want to encourage you, if you already are a believer, have a reputation of righteousness. You say, what do you mean? Do the right thing, the right way, with the right heart. That's righteousness. Do the right thing, the right way, with the right heart. That's righteousness. And so be that kind of person. Have that reputation. Every day put on that attitude. So that's your assignment, follower of Jesus, is I'm going to put this armor on. I'm going to do the right thing, the right way, with the right heart. And you say, okay, I got it. Righteousness, those two sentences, thanks for the summer. You're welcome. But pastor, why should I care about righteousness? I mean, it doesn't seem like anybody else cares about righteousness. Doesn't seem like anybody in the world cares about being right with God. Doesn't seem like anybody that I know cares about doing the right thing. Why should I be concerned or even focus on or consider righteousness? Well, I'm glad you asked. And I'm going to give you two reasons. They're not in your notes, but I'll share them with you. You need to be concerned and care about righteousness, number one, because it's the only way to live. Friend, it is the only way to live. And I've got a verse for you. Look in your notes. They're on the screen. Here's the verse, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28, and let's read it together, real life, Corpus Home Church online right here in the room. What does this verse say? Read it with me. Doing what is right is the way to life. Circle doing what is right. That's righteousness. Doing what is right, notice this, it's not just the way to live, it's the way to life. In other words, if you're not doing the right thing, you're just existing, and your life is empty. And believe me, I've lived on both sides of this thing, and if you are not doing the right thing, you are not satisfied in your life. If you're just going the way of the world and doing things, it's just empty. 
because God made you on purpose for a purpose. Now, uh, St. Augustine, I put this on the screen because it's this impactful. It's going to be very obvious he lived in a whole other time when they spoke differently, but I think you can get it. But this really summarizes the first reason why you need to care about righteousness. St. Augustine said, I quote, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Wow. That says it better than I could ever say it. Man, our hearts are restless. My heart was restless until I came to God. My heart was restless until I decided, you know what? I'm tired of doing the wrong thing. I'm tired of pursuing everything that people say is right in this world because life is not about the acquisition of stuff. Life is not about the achievement of goals. Life is about a relationship with God. And when you come to that realization and realize, wow, that's what, not watch this, not just how to live, but that's the way of life. Because until you start doing the right thing, you are just existing and you are empty and you're not satisfied. So that's a big reason why to concern yourself with righteousness. But here's another big reason you should really be concerned about righteousness, and that is it's not just the only way to live, it is the only way to heaven, and that's a big deal. You see, when God made you, we messed up in the garden, and that's what Genesis tells us, and now we're not right with God, so what do we do? Well, he says, I love you, and I want you to be with me. And, and I love you so much, but watch this. He wants you to choose to love him. Your creator wants you to choose, yes, I love you back. Because if he forced you to love him, then that wouldn't be love at all. So do you love me? And you see, you can say no, but listen, God wants you to choose to love him. He, he doesn't want to spend eternity without you, but you can say today, you can say, I don't care. You can say, you know what, I'm not going to love God, I'm going to rebel against God. Matter of fact, I'm just going to be apathetic toward God. If he does exist, I don't want to talk to him. And you can decide to rebel against God your whole life. You can decide, you know what, I'm going to do things my way, not your way. And you can decide, I don't care about righteousness and I'm going to rebel against God. You can do that your whole life. And you know what God says back to that kind of attitude? Well, Burger King kind of stole this, but... Basically, we'll put it on the screen here, but basically God says, have it your way. Have it your way. You want to ignore me? You want to rebel against me? You want to act like I don't exist? Have it your way. You see, friend, you can do all you want to do on this earth. You can ignore God, not love God, uh, not come to God, not love him back. And your whole life, you can rebel and do whatever you want to do, but one day you will step into eternity. And does it make any sense when you stepped into eternity after you have spent a life of rebelling against God that all of a sudden you want to be with him forever? That doesn't make any sense. If you don't want to be with him, you will step into eternity and he will say, have it your way. I loved you your whole life and I just wanted you to love me back, but you were created to choose and have it your way. You see, I want to lean into God's righteousness because it makes me right with him, but I can reject that righteousness, but it will impact my eternity, and that's why it's so important. You're like, okay, well, I get it. It's important, so what do I do? Well, you need to put this armor on. I told you I was going to share with you some life-changing things. Here they are, three life-changing truths that you need to know and you can share with anybody because this is, as simple as I can say it, this is the gospel. This is the good news. Truth number one, I can't make myself righteous. This is a big one. This doesn't sound very nice, and that doesn't sound good, but it's a fact. None of us are perfect. As a matter of fact, Corpus Home Church Online, right here in the room, just turn to your neighbor right now and say, you are not perfect. Just tell them, you are not perfect. Some married couples, you've been waiting to say that. It's like, Pastor told me to tell you, you're not perfect. Now, hey, turn to your other neighbor and say, I already knew that. Just tell, I already knew that, okay? Like, you know, tell, call me out. We don't need people to tell us we're not. We already know. We're, we've made mistakes. We're not perfect. Uh, and and it's, it's, you know, we're all just people who mess up. And even though we can't make ourselves righteous, this is why, by the way, have you ever heard this phrase, self-righteous? 
Have you ever met a self-righteous Christian? Don't raise your hand. And the worst people in the world walk around like, I am good. No, you're not. You're a jerk. And you're a self-righteous religious person acting like you've got it all together and everybody knows you don't. You know, the only people Jesus was harsh with in the world when he had his earthly ministry were self-righteous religious people. He looked at those Pharisees. They walked around like, I am perfect, and I will call out all imperfect people. Those are the ones Jesus called out because he said, turn to your neighbor right now and tell them you're not perfect. <laughs> Man, those Pharisees were like, who does he think he is? You can't make yourself righteous. That's why Jesus... Came. Now look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20. And let's say the first eight words real life. Read the first eight words with me. There is not a righteous person on earth. There you go. There's not a righteous person on this entire planet. Start looking right now, you'll never find him. There's not a righteous person on earth who always does good and does not ever sin. This verse includes me. This verse includes you. This verse includes the Pope. Everybody, everybody, no one is righteous. I can't make myself righteous. Now look at Romans chapter 3, verse 20. I love how the Living Bible translates this in your notes. It says, no one can ever be made right. That's righteousness, being right in God's sight. That's righteousness. No one can ever be righteous. Watch this. No one can ever be made right in God's sight. Help me out with the next two words real life. By doing. Oh, I just got to do some more things. I just got to do this, and then I got to do that. And then I got, no, you, no one is made right by doing what the law commands. For, watch this, for the more we know God's law, the clearer it becomes that we're not obeying them. You see, I love talking to people about the gospel. It's what I'm called to. It's what I'm passionate about. And, and I want to help you because when someone asks you, are you righteous with God? Or they may say, do you know for certain you're going to heaven? Either way, I want you to have the right answers, everybody, okay? So don't give the two wrong answers that I hear most. So this is an open book test, but if this is your answer, I'm going to allow you to change it today, okay? But here's what I hear all the time. I mean, all the time. I talked to a guy one time and said, do you know for certain you're going to heaven, sir? And he said, oh, yeah, I do. I said, really, how do you know you're going to heaven? He said, because I obey the Ten Commandments. What he said. You know what I said? I said, name them. <laughs> he got two. And they were the easy ones. He got, don't murder. Fine, right? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so you're not on death row. Congratulations, right? And he said, don't commit adultery. Well, he was single, so that was low hanging fruit. I mean, come on. <laughs> what else you guys all he knew? So I was able to share with him, I said, sir, do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, you have heard it said, do not murder, but I say, if you've had hatred in your heart toward anyone, and you've held resentment in your soul for them, you have already killed them already. He said, I know you said don't commit adultery. You know what Jesus said? You have heard it said, don't commit adultery, but I say to you, if anyone has looked with lust in his heart toward a woman, he's committed adultery with her already. You know what he said? He's like, dang. <laughs> it's like, man, I have really missed it. I've only struck out twice. And I was like, that's because you only know two. <laughs> Don't make me go through all 10 <laughs> because all of us have messed up. So if your answer today is, I'm good enough, nobody's good enough. Here's another wrong answer. You know, for certain you're going to heaven. I was talking to a teenager years ago at a camp, and, and he said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to heaven. I was like, how do you know you're going to heaven? Because I'm better than most people. That, that was the answer. I'm like, so you think God grades on a curve? It's like, man, you weren't going to make it in, but four really bad people just showed up, so congratulations. I mean, I was like, son, listen, I got no doubt you're better than Hitler. You're a saint compared to him. And listen, friend, today, I've got no doubt that there's many people in this room that are better than me. You're more moral, more ethical, but that is not going to get you to heaven. 
You need a lot better answer, okay? Because you can't make yourself righteous. Now, let me ask this question. By a show of hands, how many of you guys have ever been to the Grand Canyon? Ever been to the Grand Canyon? Oh, yeah. It was amazing, especially sunset, sunrise. Now, in case you haven't been, okay, guys, here's what it looks like, all right? So there's the Grand Canyon. Now, let's just suppose we're looking over the Grand Canyon, and all of a sudden, we're like, you know what? Let's try to jump over it. Man, let's do this. You know, I'm like get all excited, right? In. It's like, man, you know, and, and you look at me, and, you know, now this is probably what I need to tell you, that I actually won the long jump at Chastain Middle School <laughs> and uh, brought it, you know what I'm saying? And you're probably like, oh, yeah? Well, I won the long jump in high school or college. Okay, you know, Pastor, I'm going to jump further than you. Oh, okay. And or maybe you're an Olympian. You know, you won the Olympics at long jump. How many of you guys know whoever's going to line up with me may make it further than me, but not any of us are going to make it over that Grand Canyon, okay? No, you're not going to make it over. And you may go further than me, but you are not going to make it. You say, well, I'm going to make it to heaven by being good. That's like trying to jump over the Grand Canyon. And you're better than a lot of people. But congratulations, none of us made it. Oh, my goodness, we need some help. I hope God's got another plan than us trying to do this on our own. Yes, he does. Second truth, write this down. This will change your life. God sent Jesus to pay for my sins. I'm not going to heaven. I'm not getting across the Grand Canyon because I'm a great long jumper. I'm not going to heaven because I'm a pastor. I'm going to heaven because Jesus paid for my sin, and I believe it in my heart. I've uh, told this story to my men's group recently, but the best way I could describe this great news to you would be what happened uh, in North Carolina. Now, our prayers are going out to North Carolina and, and, and our support financially. We just love all those in North Carolina. Our prayers are with you. Um, but way back, um, there was a guy named Billy Graham, who was one of the great evangelists, one of my heroes. And uh, before he was popular, and he preached to more people than anyone's ever preached the gospel to, but he was just getting started. He's going from town to town and uh, he was trying to make it from one town to the next in between crusades, and he was going too fast. Billy Graham was breaking the speed limit. A man of God breaking the law. Now, those who are on staff with me know that I also struggle with this sin, okay? <laughs> breaking the law. Billy Graham got pulled over by a sheriff when he crossed county line, and the sheriff pulled him over and was just mean as a, you know, just like, you, you, you know, give him, it's like, and this is back when you had to go pay your fine immediately. You had to f literally follow the sheriff to the county seat and pay your fine to the judge at that moment. So you just thought you were late. Here he goes. He broke the law and he goes all the way to the county seat and the judge comes out of his office, comes back and sits behind the desk and he looks up and this sheriff's like, can you believe this guy? He was this, how fast he was going and all this stuff. And the judge looks up and he recognizes Billy Graham. The sheriff didn't know who Billy Graham was, but the judge had just heard him preach two weeks ago. So he's like, oh my goodness, I love this guy. But the sheriff's like, he broke the law, he's got to pay the fine. You know, and he, so he's in a predicament here, he loves the guy, but he's got to, he broke the law. True story. So the judge takes the gavel and says, sir, Mr. Graham, you are guilty of the laws of this county, and I can, I, you know, I declare you're guilty, and he throws the gavel down. But what he did next shocked the sheriff because then the judge stood up, took off his robe, walked around, pulled out his own wallet, said, Mr. Graham, it'd be an honor to pay this fine for you, and paid Billy Graham's ticket. This is exactly what God has done for us. You see, when you break man's laws, you play, you pay man's fines. When you break God's law, you pay God fines. And he looked down and said, Micah, you are guilty. But then he took off his royal and divine attributes and he walked this earth and his name is Jesus. And he spread his arms on that cross and was nailed on that tree for me. And he said, Micah, you deserve to go to hell, but I'm going to pay your way to heaven. The judge became my savior. You see, on that cross, Jesus did not say, I'm finished. He said, it is finished. It's done. And this is the difference between Christianity and every other religion, the word do and the word done. 
Every other religion you ever grew up with will say, do this, do this, do this. Good luck. He goes, yeah, do this, 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 and this too. Jesus said, it's done. It's paid for. There's nothing you can do. You can't be righteous enough, so I'm going to pay your penalty for you. Here's some verses about that. Romans 3.20 in the New Living Translation says, you are, here it is, made right with God. That's righteousness. So your righteousness, watch this, is by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone who believes. Say this with me real life. What does it say? No matter who we are. Listen, friend, no matter who you are or what you've done or where you've been, No matter how far you feel from God today, this news is for you. Because it doesn't matter who you are. Watch this. Romans 3, 23. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Now, Lord willing, I'm going to be preaching through Romans next year, but I just want to give you this big, huge passage right here about the gospel. Everyone needs it. You can't be made righteous. We've all missed God's standard. None of us can jump across the Grand Canyon. Here we go. Verse 24. Yet God... God saw that we couldn't get to him, so he came to us. Watch this. In his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. Righteousness is free. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Our judge became our savior. Look at the next verse. For God, verse 25, for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. That's the good news. That is the most amazing news I have ever heard. I cannot make myself righteous. Jesus came to this earth, paid for my sins on the cross by his blood, and now I can be made right with God. That's good news. You see, God gives us a symbol of that good news in the church, and it's actually called baptism. Whenever you see somebody get baptized, they're standing up like this, and all of a sudden they're like, They go underwater, completely underwater. Jesus went completely underwater. It says he came up out of the water as a a symbol to us, to embrace this symbol. But they come about, what are they saying? All my sins are washed away. I'm become, and now I am made new. My sins, my penalty has been paid for by the blood of Jesus. Watch this. Not just all the sins I've ever committed to this point, but all the sins I ever will commit. It is by grace, it is free. And it's the body armor of righteousness that I wear because of him. Today, real life, uh, at the end of this service, while you're singing a song about gratitude, three people are going public with their faith in Jesus Christ. They're going to let you know that they believe in what Jesus has done. And I believe that there are others in this room. You need to get baptized. Listen, not today, but you need to sign up. You need to say, you know what? I need everybody to know I trust Jesus And it's just a symbol of what? I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was buried. I believe three days later he came back to life. I believe I was a sinner. I believe my sins are washed away. I believe that now I'm made new and I'm set free. I can't make myself righteous. Jesus paid for my sin. And you're saying, wait a minute, are you just saying all you gotta do is believe? Yes, write this down. I accept by faith what Jesus has done for me. I accept it by faith. That's it? Yes, period. I believe what Jesus has done for me. I can't do anything. You're like, wait a minute. All you got to do is just believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross. Yes, that's it. You know, uh, so many people are coming up to me, Pastor, you know, we got to, everybody's got to make sure everybody's going to vote. We got to vote. This is big deals. Next month, we got to vote. And early, you know, yes, listen, you need to vote. It is the privilege and responsibility of a citizen of this country. I think early voting starts in a couple of weeks, but listen, friend. I've never seen so many people worked up about somebody that's going to be in charge of your life for four years. When they don't get excited or intentional about who is going to lead your heart for eternity. Who are you going to pledge your allegiance to forever? Choose wisely. And all you got to do is place your faith. That's your vote. I believe in Jesus He died on a cross and rose again. I pledge my allegiance to him. And he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And America's not just the only nation that's under God. Every nation is under God. And I pledge my allegiance to my king, my ruler, and my judge who became my savior, who was resurrected and lives in me. That's righteousness. 
Let me tell you, when you put on the body armor of righteousness, you are ready. Everybody else is afraid. Everybody else is worried. Everybody else is so stressed. I've got a Savior, and the worst thing you can do to me is kill me, and I get to spend eternity with him, so I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of the grave. I'm not afraid of any man because I know my righteousness is in my faith in Jesus. Now look at this. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. So simple, guys. It's a relationship with Jesus. Now watch this very carefully. I want to see how simple this is. It says, if you do a lot of good things and post them on Instagram so people like them. (laughs) Oh, my bad. It's not what it says. It says, watch this. If you are nice to Pastor Micah and get him really cool gifts for his birthday. No, my bad. Didn't say that. If you go to the right church, but you make sure it's the right one, because if it's the wrong one, then you're done. No, it doesn't say that. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and say these four words with me, believe in your heart. Friend, there's your vote. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Circle that. You will be saved. Not, oh man, I hope so. You going to heaven? Man, I, was, I don't know. Man, I just like, no, no. Are you, well, I don't know. I was a Boy Scout as a kid, and then I tried to go to church. No, no. Are you, you will be saved. Now watch this. For it is by, here it is again, believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And that is, is watch this, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So, Real life, as I've been praying about this message, praying for you, listen, I don't want you to, one more second to worry about eternity. I, I, I don't want you to worry, oh man, I just don't know for sure I'm going to heaven. I want you to know for sure today with 100% certainty. I know for sure I'm going to heaven, not because I'm a pastor, but because I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart, in faith. Jesus is my Savior. I've trusted in what he did on the cross for me. That's it. It's that simple. And I want you to, to make sure you're, you're hearing, you will be saved. That's a promise from God. You can count on it. And so today, maybe for the first time in your whole life, maybe it's your first time here, maybe you've been coming for a long time, but either way, I want you to pray today and know for certain. And so I'm just gonna pause right here in the message before I close and let's just know for certain, all right? So bow your head and close your eyes. Online in Corpus right here in the room. The only reason I get you to do that is it's not about your neighbor. They were all mean to you, saying you weren't perfect and everything. Don't, don't, no, this isn't about them. You already knew that. But friend, deep in your heart, do you have that certainty? Do you know for sure you're going to heaven today? Based on what we have talked, you can by trusting Jesus. Not even this prayer, but I want to help you believe in your heart, okay? So would you just whisper this prayer, not out loud, just in your heart, just say, dear God. I know I'm not perfect. Just tell him. Just tell him, I can't be righteous on my own. And then just tell him, thank you for loving me. Thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for my life. And then just tell him, thank you for the choice to love or not to love you. And here it is, friend. Just whisper this as best you can. I humbly ask you, to save me because of what Jesus has done for me. Not on the basis of what I've done, but right now, as best I know how, I trust in Jesus. I trust in what Jesus did on the cross for me. I just tell him, I believe Jesus is alive. So right now, come live in my heart. And just tell him, I put my trust in your grace. And I put my trust in your forgiveness. And I want you to be the Lord of my life from this day forward. And then just tell him, take me to heaven when I die. And help me to live for you until I get there. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, real life, can we give a hand to everyone who just prayed that prayer? Come on, celebrating. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Now listen, I want you to take out your phone right now, and I want everybody to scan this QR code, okay? If you are taking notes, you don't even have to hold your phone up to the screen. It's on the piece of paper right in your notes, on the back of your notes. And just scan that card, 
And I want to know that you just prayed that prayer. I, I just had a lady come out after the last service. She said, Pastor, I mean, I, I prayed that prayer back when I was five years old. But, but the enemy's just been beating me up over, dude. Really, da, da, da. She's like, today, listen, you say, well, I, Pastor, I prayed that prayer with you every time at the end of every service for about 100 times. Today, October 6th, you settled it. You put on the righteousness of God. And I want to know about that. I want to encourage you, just give me your cell number, your email. And you say, well, listen, everybody scan it? Yes. But some of you need to check the next box. It just says, I want to get baptized. You're going to see three people do that today. And I'd love to help you with that, sign you up for that, because it's just a public declaration of what we just said. I believe in my heart. I want everybody to know it. It's awesome, okay? Uh, but also you'll see there you can sign up for next step. And that really is your next step. Friend, you need other soldiers who are putting on the righteousness of God that know we're not perfect, but God's righteousness covers us, and we're committed to doing the right thing, blessing and serving and helping others. You need a family. Next step is how you do that. So we're full today, this afternoon, but we have it next Sunday, uh, November, uh, the first Sunday of November, the first Sunday of December. Sign up. Love to spend a couple hours with you. I want to know your story. I want you to hear ours. I want to help you make this your family, okay? So please sign up for next step. So take your time, scan that, do that. And, and friend, just, just listen to me. God's got a long-range plan for your life. You say, oh, wow, he does? Like, like 20 years? No, no, longer than that. Like 50 years? No, 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 longer than that. I mean, like 100-year plan? Longer than that. He's got a plan for eternity. And I'm so proud of all those who just prayed that prayer and said, I'm going to put on the righteousness of God, stop trying to do things on my own, get to heaven on my own, and I just want to congratulate you. So thankful for you. So now, the assignment is put on the armor of God every day this week. So how do I do that? Glad you asked. Write this down. Two things. One, you remember that God loves you. Okay, so write that down. You remember that God loves you. Remind myself how much God loves me. The more you understand how much God loves you, the more you're going to pursue doing the right thing in his righteousness. I had somebody tell me recently, Pastor, I think my problem is I just don't love God enough. I was like, no, friend, that's not your problem. The problem is you don't know how much God loves you. He loves you so much. The more you understand his love, the more you're going to want to live for him. Who do you want to spend time with? People that are head over heels in love with you. God is not mad at you. He's in love with you. And when you realize how much he is, man, you put on his righteousness. Look at this in your notes are on the screen. Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. It says, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how deep, uh, and how high his love is. Watch this. May you experience the love of Christ. That's what I want you to do this week. Experience the love of Christ. Though it's too great to really understand fully, then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Circle fullness of life. I want you to be full of righteousness this week. How do you do that? You got to empty some things out. And let God show you what needs to get out of your life that you've been filling your life with that don't matter. Stop wasting time. Stop worrying about all the frivolous things. Stop pursuing power and prestige and the passions of this world and say, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that stuff that's empty, and I'm going to fill my life with the righteousness of God. And I'm going to fill my life with righteous things. And So remind yourself how much God loves you, and you put on the armor by reminding myself to do the next right thing. So that's what you want to do this week. I'm going to put on the armor of God's righteousness, and now I remember how much he loves me, and because he loves me, I'm going to love other people. Not I'm going to love other people, so I hope God likes me. God loves me, so I'm going to love you. And then I'm just going to look for the next right thing. Where's the next right thing? When you put on the armor of God, you're saying, I'm going to do the right thing the right way with the right heart, and Lord, I'm ready. And he's going to say, help them do this. Here's your opportunity. Don't miss this. Say this. Help here. And here's how it said in Ephesians 5. It says, so be careful how you act. These are difficult days. Don't be fools. Be wise. And here it is. Make the most of every opportunity you have for, help me out real life, for what? Doing good. Let's pray about that together. Father, I thank you so much for those who settled once and for all that their entrance into heaven is paid for by the cross of Christ and that because of your righteousness, we have nothing to fear when we don't fear death because now we get to live with peace and hope. So I ask God that we would put on the righteousness that you have given us and that it would protect us, Lord, from the stress and the worry and the anxiety that's 
this world's just full of right now. And I ask, God, that you'd bless every home and every heart and bless this church as we walk as an army with your body armor of your righteousness. And I pray that people would see the difference because we, as your people, we're going to do the right thing, the right way, with the right heart. So show us, Lord, the opportunities. Help us to take them, to bless, to help, and to serve. All because, not so we can get to heaven, but because we are going there. Give us an attitude of gratitude for the cross and the empty tomb. And may it change every relationship we have. For we ask in the name of our resurrected King and Judge and Savior and friend, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Let's give God a hand for his love, his grace to us.